Hey friends! So today's video I wanted to do like a quick overview, I guess like gear tour, just overview of what I use for filming and what I use for recording and kind of generally talk through a little bit of what I use for videos because I've gotten some questions about it and I know I link things in my description but since I've been using pretty much the same gear for several years now I figured I would um, do a little bit of like a, like a my setup tour video thing. Also, I just got this shirt from Teespring. Uh, I designed it myself. It's a crop top. It's actually quite nice. It's one of their like all over crop top things. So it's on my Teespring right now if you do like it. This is a 2X women's fit. I like it. So since I do have this camera, it's a lot easier for me to show you my gear. So let me twist this around. So this is generally how my setup looks. I have my ring light here. I set up my ring light. This is an old ring light. It's, I don't even think you can get this one anymore. Really any old ring light. I'm looking into getting a new one actually soon because this one heats up a little bit. It's not LED, so it's a little bit, it gets warm. But the way I have it set up is that I have the ring light plugged in. <laughs> um, it's set up and then I have this reflector here just kind of in front of it to diffuse it. And this is one of those reflectors that you can put like a sleeve over it that's got like a gold and a silver side. So I have that I use for photos and stuff when I'm doing some still photography. But I just have it kind of propped up. It's very janky as you can see. It's a little bit ring light that came with a stand. So anything if you have a ring light that you can put on a separate light stand or get one that has one that comes with it. Either way, pretty easy. This I have hanging from the ceiling from a hook. It's a little wonky, but it works. And it just works like a reflector, like a diffuser. And so this I actually prop up on the back of my tripod. This is quite an old, big tripod. I have this giant tripod. It's definitely bigger than I need it to be, but it's the tripod that I have. It has like a, uh, like underneath it, there's like a plate that goes to the bottom of my camera and then I slide it on it. So that's how the camera is set up. And then right below the camera, I have my microphone that I attach to a monopod. Probably having a separate mic stand would make more sense, but you know, this is what I have. And I have the Zoom H6. It's a stereo recorder. And then there's a bunch of different little like connections I could put on the top. This one is just that. And then I put the, the air filter to keep things from getting too loud. I change the volume here louder or quieter. When I'm doing ASMR videos, usually I'll turn the gain up, but when I'm filming regular videos, it'll be like down here. So I love this microphone though, but it's because it's got the recorder in with a mic. I can hook it up to my computer. This is what I also use when I'm streaming. I just plug this bad boy into my computer via USB and it's fantastic. When I'm filming regular videos, I have a separate memory card that lives in here that gets recorded that I bring into my system. When I'm filming videos at my computer when I'm streaming, I just USB port it to my computer. With this camera, this is my this is my baby. This is my bad boy. Um, let's see if I can get a good shot of him. So this is a Canon 5D Mark III. I have had this for a few years now and I love it. It's what I use for photography and what I also use for filming. This is what I always use unless you can kind of tell when I'm using the camera that we're currently filming on, but I love this camera. The way I use it on my laptop, the way I use it when I film, I plug in a USB to that and then I actually plug it into my laptop, which is very old. It's a 2013, 2012, 2011, 2012 laptop. There's a software called EOS Utility, which I use and which I have been using pretty much since I got a uh, DSLR to film with. So that just gets plugged into my computer. I will show you some screenshots from that software. It's easy to use. It usually comes with any camera. So if you have a Canon camera, that software should be able to be used with any camera. This is my camera. There's currently not a memory card in it, but this is kind of what the viewfinder looks like. I don't actually see the back of this because there's not a pop-out viewfinder. This I'll be able to see, I'll be able to focus from my computer when I'm actually controlling it. Always in the video mode instead of the camera mode, you can kind of see 
there. Um, I always have my settings as well. I pretty much always have my settings at that when I'm filming. That's pretty standard. Um, the way I film, I will film in uh, 30 frames a second. And so the shutter speed needs to be double that to make sure that there's not any like weird motion blur. So say if you're filming at 60 frames a second, you would need to set the shutter speed to 120. One out of 120 to make sure that there's not any weird just motion blur, you know, so it's it's recording at a higher frame rate. So this is the the setting that I film in. Yeah, so 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames a second. Like in the video where I was doing the food stuff, I set it to uh, 1280 by 720 at 60 frames a second so I could slow it down. So when I slowed down the 60 frames a second, it was just being the, the 30 frames a second. So that's a little more complicated than what I wanted to get in this video, but that's just kind of generally the settings that I use when I'm filming. I always kind of mess with the white balance. I mess with the color correction once I get it into Premiere, um, but this is kind of generally the settings that I use. And then the lens that I use for filming is a 24 to 70 f 2.8. And I always film it at the widest focal length. So at 24, 24 millimeters, that way I can get the widest angle. So I always have the F stop, the aperture, the lowest it can get to ensure a blurry background. So like with this camera that I'm filming right now, the f-stop, the aperture, is at 1.8. This camera, the lowest it goes, uh, the lowest for this lens is 2.8. So like right now, you can kind of see how blurry the background is when I'm focused on this thing right here. So if I change the focus... So now the f-stop is at 10. Everything's a bit darker, but also all that stuff in the background is totally in focus. Well, not totally in focus, but pretty damn in focus. So I'll bring it back down to like four. Everything's a bit blurry, but not as blurry as this. So that's kind of general setting stuff. So if ever you're like trying to get the background blurry, you know, what you want to mess with is the f-stop, which is the aperture. So that kind of just controls where the focus is and how deep the uh, the field of focus is. So whenever I like look slightly out of focus in my videos, it's because this camera does not have an auto follow focus. So while I'm filming, you don't get that annoying clicking noises that so often are like unwatchable in Jackie Ina's videos. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, when I'm done filming, I will take out my memory card, which there's nothing in it, nothing in there. Then, I'm gonna turn this off. <sighs> I always use a 64 gigabyte memory card. You can use a 32, whichever. A fast memory card is definitely important. So this film's at 160 megabytes per second. So that's when I say the speed, it's that number right there. This is total like storage. And then all I really gotta do at that point is open up Premiere, open up whatever project I was working on. Well, whatever project you wanna work on. And then you just bring everything in and you start editing. I think what I might do in like a separate video is do maybe some sort of instructional video with editing, kind of how I edit my videos, how that process is. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you might be interested in seeing. I'm not sure if that's something that people might want to watch, but I figured I could start with like a gear kind of rundown, see what, so that people can see what I use, um, kind of what equipment. Basically, the most important part is having audio that is like decent. I could use my internal camera microphone from my, uh, my DSLR, but it's kind of echoey and weird. Um, and then having just lighting to where you can see it. Everything. Ring light is easy to use. It's just one light. You don't really have to worry about like setting up soft boxes. I have the reflector in front of mine to kind of have like a filter because otherwise the reflection on my glasses would be very, very annoying and I've dealt with it in the past. It's harder for folks who have glasses for sure because depending on where you set your lights, you can just have the worst glare in the world. Really happy with my audio lately. My video is the best quality it's ever been really because I love that camera. It's beautiful and it's this really all it's doing right now. It's not even taking photos. My camera misses taking photos and I miss taking photos with it. Yeah, that's kind of generally the setup that I have and I'm really happy with it. It's expensive. I will be 100% transparent. That camera is over two grand. The lens is uh, a 
at least $1,100 new. Um, the microphone, the recorder was like $500 or $400, but those have all been collected over many years. The microphone's the newest thing that I own besides this camera that I'm filming on, but like I got the microphone last year, the camera I've had for several years, the lens I've had even longer, and then I believe the ring light was like 120 bucks, but I got it like six years ago. So I'll leave a link to some ring lights in the description that are comparable because this one isn't available anymore. Ring lights are ring lights, like you don't have to get a specific kind. One that preferably is LED so it doesn't heat up your room. This one heats up my room because it is older. Um, but they have so many new ring lights now that it's like not even that difficult to get one for a decent price It's literally all I use once it gets more complicated when it gets into the computer <laughs> Honestly when it gets to the editing that's when it gets more complicated But the camera I'm using right now the Canon G7X Mark II that one I bought new on Black Friday for like $5.99. But again, there's so many kinds of cameras these days that you can get that are good quality. If you're just starting out on YouTube, you can use your fucking phone. Like, cause the video quality on iPhones or on Androids these days are wildly different than the way they looked when I first started making YouTube videos 10 years ago. So I'm like, <laughs> y'all are so, I wouldn't say privileged by having better video quality, but like, it's so much cheaper to get good video these days than it was back in the day. Like back when I started, we were using our MacBook Pro webcams and that was it. So nowadays it's way easier to get footage that looks leaps and bounds above what we had back in the day. I will leave a link to um, good places to get gear or to look into gear. Um, I always use B&H Video Photo. They have been reliable. They've got all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I love B&H. They are, I highly recommend them for gear because you can, you can buy things new, you can get things used secondhand, you can sell things secondhand. Um, so they're a good kind of aggregate of like just good quality video, photo, lighting, some sound gear. Mostly it's sound for video, like it's not like crazy intense audio equipment, but it's like audio for video. So if you've been looking for a microphone, they got all kinds of the podcast mics. Um, I know that a lot of places, microphones right now have been like sold out. Like right after this quarantine started, people like, oh no, you know it's bad when all the fucking podcast microphones are sold out on Amazon. Well, BNH has got more. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was informative in some way. If y'all were curious about how I make my videos and what I use for it, leave me any questions about like the editing process because I'll make a separate video about the post work after I've finished filming and kind of the process I take. Let me know if there's any specifics you would like to see in that video. Um, for today's song of the day, Dance Until You Die by Smokey Brights. They just put out a new single and and it, the title reminded me of that scene in Hocus Pocus and I love it. So love those guys. They're fantastic, great folks. And they put out great pop music. Like I fucking love Smokey Brights. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Uh, I'll be back on Tuesday with a new video. Uh, give this video a like if you liked it and subscribe if you would like to see more of my content. I turned 31 at the end of the month. <laughs> also my skin looks really good right now. Okay, bye everybody. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.